Hi folks, this is Jay. Hope you're okay today. We're looking at Dr. Gary Habermas's PhD uh, on his defense of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And before we do that, we're going to listen to him for five minutes on his minimal fact methodology of defending the resurrection. Uh, academic, uh, going back and forth between Cal Berkeley and Michigan. Uh, but at the time, I was deciding I don't like Michigan either, to start with. Um, I mean, University of Michigan. Yeah, he's going to stand up in a minute. He's going to want to do something. Um, but I went to Michigan State, and I developed this methodology of working the resurrection. Here's the way I started doing it. I, went, I sort of thought like this. If this book is the Word of God, it's like, duh, well, then Christianity is true. Uh, and if this book's the Word of God, Jesus has been raised from the dead, but I don't believe this book's the Word of God. I mean, I didn't believe it was inspired. At the time, I would have told you I thought it was pretty reliable, but I was starting to kind of slip away from reliability and think it was pretty, I, I, you know, that it was just like a book of ancient literature. So I started working on this method that says, if the Bible is inspired, Jesus has been raised from the dead. If it's not inspired, but it's reliable, Jesus has been raised from the dead. But what if the Bible, what if the New Testament is the worst it can be, a book of ancient literature? Now, it's no worse than that, right? I tell grad students all the time, you know it's a book of ancient literature because it's really, really old, there's pages and there's words on it. That's, that's all that's required to be a book of ancient literature. And if you want, put it on a par with Homer. Say, well, look, I'm just wondering if the Iliad has any basis in fact. Was there a Troy and was there a Trojan horse? Okay, fair question. What do we learn from the ancient world from these reports? If that's your view of the New Testament, guess what? I believe we can still get the resurrection. So I'll usually, I'll often go to State University campus, and I just say this to be provocative, you know, just to kind of tease people a little bit. And I'll say, for you Christians, Bible's Word of God, Jesus has been raised from the dead. For you who don't know, you think the Bible's probably reliable, but don't believe it's inspired, Jesus has been raised. And for you skeptics who believe the Bible's not reliable, Jesus has been raised. So here's the bad news for you, Jesus has been raised. It's a heads I win, tails you lose argument. So you say, well, yeah, that's cute. Uh, but how do you pull that off? Well, so uh, we'll be coming to uh, talk more about his presentation of his minimal fact approach. And basically what he's saying is, um, you got your Bible, and we believe the Bible is the word of God. But the Bible, even if you didn't believe the Bible, it's still got ancient literature in it. And we can deduce about Jesus' death and resurrection from that, okay? Now, uh, page 32, um, Habermas says, For the 19th century theologian, David Strauss' myth is the clothing for the expression of religious truth, for the reason one must endeavour to ascertain the societal function and meaning given a myth, trying to understand the religious message being communicated by means of this imagery. Excuse me. Boltman tried to recover this message uh, from the kernel of the myth. In other words, myths serve the function of following various societies to speak of treasured beliefs, mysteries and customs in a way that ordinary language might not quite be able to duplicate. But just to say that those who say that Jesus is a myth need to realise if they're going to say that, which definition of myth are you going for because there are so many definitions. And why are we choosing your definition? Um, anyhow, Habermas then spends quite a bit of time on uh, David Hume, the philosopher from 1711 to 1776, page 85 of Habermas's PhD. Experience was believed to be the criterion for obtaining knowledge. Page 85, Hume also followed the emphasis on experience. He believed that this experience was the foundation for all knowledge. Page 86, in order to determine if such events have actually happened, one must test the available data empirically. Page 87, the test is therefore one based based once again on the testimony of experience, the experience of miracles is pitted against the experience of supporting the uniformity of nature, page 87. 
Hume concludes that it is more probable that the experience favoring the laws of nature is more reliable and the miracle is therefore rejected, page 87. Now, Hume gave some rough criteria for investigating miracles. The miracles had to be accounted by reputable people. The miracles had to have a decent motive. Excuse me. The miracles mustn't be amongst the uneducated. Um, etc. So those are some of his criteria. Page 88 for Hume, David Hume, Gary Habermas thinking about David Hume. A miracle is a violation of the laws of nature and an firm and unalterable experience has established these laws. The proof against the miracle from the very nature of the fact is as entire as any argument from experience can possibly be imagined. Habermas replies in page 89 this definition is based upon the idea that the totality of experience rests against the miracle when such is far from proven there definitely are miracle claims that are experimentally based but these are brushed aside by assumed superiority of other varieties of experience page 89 so Gary Habermas is taking on the David Hume um, I agree with his definition. I don't think it's uh, a violation um, of nature, but uh, I think a, a some kind of interjection in nature. Uh, I believe that that uh, David Hume is wrong when he says there could never be miracles because we've not seen any. That begs the question. You. Um, it still means that we have to look at the evidence, whether you like it or not. We'll look at it in more detail. And and what Gary Habermas is doing, he's talking about in the minimal fact there, he's talking about the need to just use the Bible as historical, reliable information about Jesus can show that he rose from the dead.